So Intermountain Healthcare has two demonstration projects going on, one focused in the Ogden area, the other focused in the St. George area. And they're really trying uh, through an investment uh, and a collaboration with people in those communities, kind of focus on zip codes and determine whether or not they can make a difference in health outcomes uh, based on thinking about the social determinants of health. So in some ways, it's thinking about if we provide housing, if we support increased food security, if we have kind of um, preventative health care, can we make a difference in two things, the health outcomes of families and ultimately the cost of health care because they don't develop ex um, the kinds of uh, problems that send them to the emergency room uh, where they're really costly because we haven't done the kind of addressing the early on kind of needs that they have to make sure that they don't have uh, bad health outcomes. I think we need to take um, the, what they're learning in those zip code projects and be able to say, are there opportunities for us to make kind of targeted investments that will help support families that will allow our kids then um, to make sure they're achieving their learning outcomes, to make sure families have better health outcomes and that they have more access to family sustaining jobs, which ultimately will help support the entire family. I think the main thing we need to do, the main policy we need to look at is the community health centers that are in our community, in the underserved communities, how do we expand their capacity? Because we know in our community, a lot of individuals who are going to this, to, to these healthcare communities, they're not going anywhere else for their healthcare. This is where they're going. This is where they're receiving their physical health. This is where they're receiving their mental health. This is why our women are going and receiving their maternal health. And so I think we need to um, look at policies on how do we, number one, bring funding back to them, and also how do we expand them in our community. I think they play a major part, a major part in our community with providing that service. One of the real priorities for 2021 should be a focus on evictions and keeping people in their places of housing so we don't have a dramatic increase in homelessness because um, we know that you know being in the house is of course going to be better for the families especially the children but homelessness creates a, a whole nother cycle that also costs the taxpayers a lot of money when it comes to um, mental health and and and, and um, and homeless shelters, we've, we've just invested in three new ones and yet they're already full uh, this winter. So I do think that we ought to be looking at the issues of how we can pe keep people in their housing. We've had a, an affordable housing crunch for years and I expect that's only gonna get worse uh, with this recession. We cannot talk about poor health unless we talk about health disparities and who have access to health care. And I think that needs to be one of the lens we as we're looking at policy around healthcare that we need to look um, through, um, who have access. I think we need to look at um, expanding capacity and um, to those communities that are underserved um, in the state of Utah. We have a number of, of um, communities where individuals do not, are not able to get to, um, to, to Health care. They're not able to do preventative health care. They're not able to address their diabetes or their heart condition or, or their high blood pressure. One of the bills that I will be focusing during this next legislative session is a bill that addresses health care coverage for kids. I think it should be the goal of the state of Utah that all children in our state have um, access to high quality uh, health care coverage. And we have mechanisms to do that. But right now, the barriers are, are big. And we're making it very difficult for, for our kids to get there. And we know that if we want a kid to focus on education and you know, focus in their education, we need to make sure that they're healthy. It's hard to go to school and, and concentrate when you're having uh, a toothache or if something is not okay uh, uh, you know, with you uh, health-wise. So this is an opportunity. I mean, I think we want to put our money where our mouth is when it comes to our family values and valuing children and, and how important they are for them to be healthy. 
We know that families also become more healthy when their kids have access to uh, healthcare. So I think there is a great return on investment when we have access to, to care and healthcare. And in this case, we've, unfortunately in Utah, we've ranked the lowest when it comes to, for example, that our Hispanic Latino kids being covered, even though they qualified, somehow they're not getting uh, the coverage they need. So this is an opportunity. My, my bill will be addressing that. We'll be addressing outreach efforts that are uh, that are significant that actually will have the outcomes that we need. And, and I'm excited for that, uh, making sure that more kids get access to care. And I think this pandemic has shown how important it is to have uh, access to quality health care. We've got a lot of work to do to get more of our children uh, insured. Uh, we have one of the lowest uninsured rates in the country for children. And uh, we're going to be making a big effort uh, this session to drive that number up to get coverage for those for those kids. When we're talking about uh, public health, we need to go uh, not only within the, the medical field and look at things such as uh, health care costs and health insurance, but we need to go outside of that as well. So much impacts our our health uh, so that when we're talking about those root causes, uh, it could be environmental factors uh, such as clean air. Uh, it can be uh, other kinds of envi environmental factors such as systemic racism. Uh, we, it could be uh, food insecurity. It could be uh, unemployment or underemployment. It could be a lack of transportation. Uh, it could be uh, uh, educational impacts. I mean, there's so many things that we need to look at. As a policymaker, public health needs to be seen as a larger issue uh, than what has traditionally been defined. Once you have individuals who are able to uh, provide for themselves and their families, they're going to have greater uh, resources and time to, to take care of their health, to see their doctors regularly, to address uh, basic conditions that uh, need uh, attention, to provide for preventative uh, health checkups and things like that. So this is all, all very holistic in the sense that, you know, if you provide such things as uh, reducing or eliminating food insecurity, providing affordable housing, providing a greater access to compensation that allows people to quit a second or a third job and be able to spend more time with their families and their kids. Those are basic things that we want for ourselves. And they're basic things that we should want all Utahns to have.